Hello, everybody. It's time for There's a Will. I'm Will, and uh, I have a great guest today on the show. Thanks for watching. If you really like this, uh, please go down and, uh, and uh, give us a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It helps to uh, get more viewers. And uh, you don't want to be alone, or you like company, right? Uh, so hit that like button, uh, because why are we here? We do it for you. That's why we're here. At any rate, my guest today is an adventure travel uh, expert uh, who specializes in Africa, particularly. She's a nice, uh, nice lady. Her name is Eva Hoynowska Leshak, and she's right here. There she is. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, Eva. Um, what is, uh, what's this all about? Uh, uh, adventure travel. What does it mean? I mean, are you, is it guaranteed to be adventurous? Or? It's very uh, wide um, term. It's very difficult exactly to say adventure travel because it depends, of course, of your ad experience. If mm -hmm. it's your first travel somewhere abroad, everything can be adventure. Even trying a new fruit is adventure. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you are quite experienced and if you travel quite a lot, you search for adrenaline. I think adventure is connected with adrenaline. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for me, it's advent adventure, it's equal to adrenaline. Mm -hmm. like. So, so you, your, your adventure travel uh, uh, includes adrenaline. So does it, is there like an asterisk? Is there a, a uh, star there that says adrenaline included? Or? Uh, usually, yes. And also my travels are not very easy. Uh, for example, okay, that's it. Right. it's not very easy. For example, it's mm -hmm. not easy to uh, meet uh, tribes far from the, from the big cities like in Ethiopia, I do, mm -hmm. or climb uh, to search gorillas in Congo, which is uh, in, in general a very difficult place to travel, to enter. And uh, sometimes my travels also need to have good, be in, be in a good physical conditions, because uh, being on attitude, it's demanding, for, uh, it demands uh, your body be healthy. And uh, without this, you cannot travel. For example, in uh, Himalaya or in Tibet, where you have like 3,600 meters or 5,300. Mm -hmm. It's difficult even to breathe if you go there. And it's adventure for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we'll come back to some of these experiences. You just touched on a few. It's, it sounds uh, uh, exciting. <laughs> but uh, um, I wonder, uh, how did you get into adventure travel? As a young, uh, young girl, did you say, good Lord, one day I want to go find the gorillas in the forest and go to the Himalaya <laughs> or practice to, uh, in the, for the Himalayas? Uh, Climbing Everest, or uh, no, no. I, to start, I, I mean, to, my story. It's uh, it's curious and a little bit strange mm -hmm. because uh, my first travel um, was to China when mm -hmm. I was. Uh, it was ten years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was a model and I start doing some modeling jobs like um, pictures, uh, photo shoots. Um, catwalks uh, but I remember I took two entrances visa to entrance visa mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I came back I said I, could, I cannot lose this visa I have to come back again to China so I passed my exams and came back to uh, China and it was significant 2009 uh, when after this trip I won pageant uh, beauty co beauty contest you won what a beauty contest where in Poland, but oh, it was uh, like a regional one. Mm -hmm. But I, was, I was, was the first. Was it the most beautiful uh, lady in the world contest? Or? No, beautiful, uh, the most beautiful girl in Mazovia region. All oh, right, okay, that's Mazovia where we are region. now. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, and then. Uh, to make it very short, because the story is very long, I was in a good place, I met a good people, and I made the right decision to do my first trip to Africa. And it was mm -hmm. a unusual destination, because going first time to Africa, I was Burundi, Uganda, Rwanda, and Congo. And uh, it was my dream to visit um, Central Africa, because the northern part, it's, of course, Africa as a continent, but uh, in the culture, is like more extension of Middle East. And uh, during that trip to Africa, 
Uh, you mean like uh, Egypt, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. No, no, no. I mean, Morocco. This is like this an is extension. extension. Yeah. Algeria. So. Yes, but Sahara and what everything was, is on the south. It's for me more Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, during my first trip, I had opportunity uh, to work as a tour guide, and till this moment, uh, this is my major job, mm -hmm. and also blogging. So uh, we get to blogging things. So you're a tour guide. Yeah. Um, uh, how does it work? If I take a tour with you, <laughs> what do I have to do? I, I have to be in shape and I have to eat healthy food. So I Not really, because no? sometimes... No more cheesecake? I can still eat cheesecake occasionally? Of course. Yeah, okay. Right. I do everything, as you can see. You, you, Maybe you, you don't believe, but I do. You do, okay. Nice. <laughs> in general, uh, I work... If you say so. Yeah. Uh, I work for a few travel agencies and also on my blog you can find some trips which uh, I am organizing mm -hmm. and those are not very common like mm, desert in uh, Israel mm -hmm. and uh, Danakil uh, in Ethiopia and tribes in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't know or maybe you know. Uh, Danakil area is uh, first of all one of the hottest places in the world which is which for me is adventure and adrenaline right. and also it's the biggest depression in Africa so it's also being it's adrenaline for me and if you want you can join for the, that trip I can How sure. much, what's it gonna cost me um, Let me I'll sign up do you have a <laughs> just write my, uh, write to me email or uh, on messenger that is enough <laughs> okay and what is it what's it gonna cost me to go on this uh, adventure uh, uh, extravaganza in Polish currency uh, it's like f 1,400 zloty, One, 14,000. Uh, yeah. 14,000, 14, not 1,400. Yeah. No, 14,000. 14, Which is about uh, $4,000. Yeah. Yeah, something in this area. But yeah. it, maybe it's a lot or not. For, Pol for, Polish is, uh, for Polish people, it's quite a lot. And people think, oh, Africa is a poor continent and uh, everything should be cheap there. But it's not because usually if you no, want... you're staying in good places. And, yeah. It's not really. But maybe you don't imagine if you want to stay on desert you, or you want to stay uh, uh, in very, in, on the camp in, um, in the middle of a national park on, in Savannah, you need people to work there. You need people... You need... Um, uh, all facilities like water, electricity, and it costs a lot of money to bring in the middle of nowhere, and then and the service also costs. So price that that's why prices are so high. And Africa, for more uh, for majority of people, is not place to travel because of costs, but maybe mainly because they think everywhere is war, which is not the truth. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the, uh, people think there's civil war everywhere. But it's, so, not. Um, it's not. And also case. people think that Africa is uh, one body, but it's it con it's connected from the different pieces and every piece is so different. And you can, we cannot call one Afri an Africa is a place of war. Of course, in some places there are, but in general, uh, they feel the country, those countries are quite safe. Everywhere something wrong can happen, but you cannot uh, generalize. Mm -hmm. And why, why did you, why are you so fascinated with with Africa as opposed to South America or the Far East or uh, or even Europe? I mean, the story is so yeah. funny. Um, there are two things. Uh, when I was a child, my dad uh, every weekend he took me to, uh, to my st uh, to the sofa and see say, please watch with me uh, some TV programs about the nature, about discovering the world. So it was my routine to watch with him those. Uh, the, um, documentaries but the other thing was when i at school we had a book it calls um tomek on uh, the lounge it's like a Tom, uh, Tomax Thomas adventures uh, around yes, the world? Uh, but no, on the black land. On the black like, land? Like in Africa. So I, I have read this book. And uh, I said, Arthur Sklarski. Sklarski, exactly. I know these books. Of course, he, it is yeah. Syria of different yeah. uh, books yeah. in different places. Yeah. Australia's and, one. And, yes, yeah. Australia. And he's collecting animals, isn't he? Uh, unfortunately, yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. Sklarski, I mean Tomek, uh, where uh, was a hunter and uh, he killed animals. So thanks the, God. The writer was Arthur Sklarski. That's what we're saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, who I never was... left Frotzpov, apparently. Really? 
Yes, apparently and he never he, went on any of these trips. He just you, read National Geographic and made it up. Really? Yeah. But do you know yeah, that this apparently. Syria, Thomas, Syria is continuing but another person? No, I didn't know that. So you can find like teens book about Tomac. Really? And uh, then the, 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 the latest one are uh, written by another person, but still the story is continuing. Why? I did not know. It would make a very good uh, uh, TV series or something like that, wouldn't it? Yeah. He would. For kids, yeah, it'd be mm. good. Yeah. And not only. So, so reading these books got you interested in yeah. in Africa as uh, what when you were uh, yeah girl, exactly. I guess, but yeah. Um, in general, I don't like uh, lying on the beach. I yeah, yeah. I like doing some physical activities. Mm -hmm. uh, so Africa is, I think, is a good place to do all of this. So meet animals, uh, do some trekkings, uh, do some raftings as adventures, uh, meeting people, colorful people, different people, different culture. And uh, those elements, those things make me so happy in Africa. That's mm -hmm. why maybe I visited this continent over 50 times. 50 times? Yes. That's a lot, isn't it? Yeah. And, and how many people do you take on a, uh, when you go on one of these journeys, how many mm -hmm. people do you take with you? It's a, those groups are very small. The, short, the, the smallest one were three people, mm -hmm. and the biggest one was four, uh, 14. So in general, it's like 10, 9, 11, like mm -hmm. this. So, uh, so it's a manageable, that's a manageable group for you. Yeah? Mm, it's not about these um, people, still, people are not very. Uh, they are afraid. People are afraid of Africa and uh, collecting big groups like 50 people. I think it's not possible. Yeah. And sometimes that would be too many anyway. It wouldn't be fun, would it? I mean, it'd be good money, but it wouldn't necessarily be fun, would it? I think you cannot enjoy the trip if you are in a so big group. Uh, mm -hmm. Like me, it's also very much easier working with a little group because I can sure. concentrate on every person and I can find their needs. And it's so much easier to solve the problems. But on the other hand, if uh, people, know, people know we are small, Everybody can show up their own needs, and there are much more needs to 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 prepare to, to to solve the problems. And people are much more open, which I really like. Mm -hmm. Well, good. I think it sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. Tell me, uh, what is uh, what are some of the most uh, interesting places you've been? Not just Africa, but mm -hmm. but if if you had to pick, say, three of your favorite <laughs> places, could you do it, or, or do you uh, just like them all? It's difficult to say because somebody, a lot of people are asking me, oh, Eva, you've been everywhere. Try to give me a, um, a, a country which I have to see. But it is difficult to say because mm -hmm. maybe you are interested more in food, maybe more in culture, maybe more in yeah. nature. And uh, if I recommend, if you want to see nature, nature probably you will not visit China because China is full of history. Or if you want to see history, probably you will not go to, I don't know, uh, Madagascar. Uh, because it's why there's no history in Madagascar. The history is very little, but okay. mainly Madagascar is a nature, uh -huh. only moors and uh, national parks and uh, uh, mountains to, to do some hiking. I always wonder how the animals got there. Uh, it's uh, an island, right? Yes, it was an Last island. Last time I checked, you it know, is there an is island, a right? there yeah. is a ages ago, ages ages ago, million ages ago. Uh, there is a, there were one huge continent, it calls Gondwana, Gondwana in Polish. Mm -hmm. And after the time, it's separated for the different lands, different continents. And uh, oh, Madagascar yeah. okay. was uh, one of the first uh, land separated. And uh, those animals you can find in, uh, on, the, on the island are very, uh, first of all, endangered. They are um, endemites. You cannot find them. They have and specific animals you can only find there. Of course. So like Tasmania has specific animals. Yes. You lemurs can only find are, there. in general, some yeah. lemurs you can find there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, I think, seven kinds of baobab and all of them. What? Of baobab tree. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Baobab tree. And yeah. the few majority of them you can find only in Madagascar. Of course, some you can find on the um, Indian Ocean coast, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the huge, the biggest variety you can find on Madagascar or chameleons. 
mm-hmm. some uh, some species only in Madagascar. Mm-hmm. I, I did not know that. I did not know about the chameleons of Madagascar. What about uh, uh, some of the more? Uh, so, so th- uh, those are some of your favorite places. But uh, I saw on your your YouTube, you have a bunch of uh, nice. Uh, uh, clips there, mm-hmm. and I saw one of those was uh, you were looking for gorillas. Yes, I was. I lo- mean, not fighters, not no. partisans, <laughs> but the the animal, right? Yes. How there did that are go? some mountain. There are some um, place. There are some places in the world, mm-hmm. in Uganda, Rwanda, and Congo, where we can find a uh, few families uh, of uh, mountain gorillas. Um, and uh, it's a great adventure to see them, especially you need to do some, uh, have some physical attitudes because uh, we need to climb a little bit. You and have to go hiking into the jungle. Yes, into the, and what uh, is funny, you can, you can find, you can choose easy way or difficult way, but easy mm-hmm. way, where it's flat, it takes eight hours <laughs> to find them. Mm-hmm. But if you want a more difficult uh, route, um, it takes one and a half hour. <laughs> So One have, and a half hours. So you take the difficult route. That's, no, that, unfortunately, my, my guests were uh, not physical, uh, physically fit. ready. Physically fit enough fit. Yeah, or and ready. Yeah. yeah so so they decide to do longer. But they, they said, uh, they said. Mm, that's a long walk, eight hours. Yeah. Yes, but if you see them after yeah. one hour, you say, oh, it's like a. Like this, but if yeah. you walk and search, and then you have rain, which is, you feel like nothing can be uh, dry after, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and your your shoes are also wet. You, you mm-hmm. the, there is a muddy path, and you feel uh, you need a lot of difficulties. Then you remember, I did something great. Hmm. But if it takes reminds me of a... Warsaw in the winter, yeah. <laughs> in the, the muddy path. Yeah, muddy path. The muddy path, and not quite so warm. The uh, so, there you are, you are, uh, hiking through the jungle, and eventually yes. you get there. Now, how, uh, how do you uh, approach gorillas? Uh, there is a, uh, you cannot do it by yourself. Uh, right. I did it in Congo and uh, Uganda twice, mm-hmm. and usually you need to buy special permit, but with a long um, in advance. Mm-hmm. Uh, much long because a lot of people wants to go. Even the price, which is so high, mm-hmm. uh, doesn't say doesn't stop people because in Uganda it costs nearly nine hundred dollars per entrance per person. In Rwanda it's one thousand five hundred dollars uh, per person per entrance, and you are, it's not guaranteed to see them. Uh, but in general, you need to... So it's to, a bit of a gamble. Yeah. Yes, yes, because yeah. you, are, you are going to the ha- home mm-hmm. and uh, it's, nothing, it's nothing guaranteed. Uh, we have um, a team with us as a guide, as, a, as some people who use um, GPS, GPS to locate them. And uh, there are some people who, are, uh, who enter to the forest much earlier to search them. So is a, there's a big team joining. And uh, it's so, and not every family you can visit because uh, some of them are not habituated. It goes mm-hmm. like this. It means they are not. They, they are ready to meet people. Of they're course. not ready for people. Yes. Okay, the ones who are ready for people. Let's mm-hmm. assume there's a gorilla family. Yes. In their gorilla house, and they're ready for people. Yes, and they are big, the silver back. They're and huge. Yeah, Three hundred kilograms. Yeah, and, and so you can come like you can you can be in a distance yeah. like me and you now. Really? Yes, for sure you cannot touch them, but they can touch you. And do they? They do. They touch you? Uh, in Congo. <laughs> but yes. Not in what, do, what do they do? They like touch your hair or something uh, like that. It was like. This, uh-huh. look in my eyes and just move. I was like, oh. Wow. That sounds crazy. So the gorilla, this huge gorilla, is uh, it's like King Kong, isn't it? As, yes, yeah. like this. If you watched King Kong, it's the same figure. And so what is that feeling when you're right next to the gorilla and it reaches out to touch you? Uh, <laughs> How do you feel? I lost my tongue to describe. You, you, yeah, you. It's um, you first of all, yeah. you are happy because after yeah. many hours of walk, you see the the thing you want to see, and then you 
it's so easy to notice how uh, common with humans they are. They are, they eat similar. They have their hands are similar. Their body looks like, of course, a bit different, but like human body. And then there is another experience. They are coming to you and look at you, and they, for example, they are hanged on the trees and look at you, thing like. You're a friend of me, but mm -hmm. looked a bit different. They think, it oh, does... you're like me, but yeah. you're just a little bit different. Yes, yeah. you're like me, but yeah. but please don't go this way because my food is here. Or, or I, I'm nicely hanged on the tree, but don't please don't disturb me. Take a picture, of course, no problem, but yeah. keep a distance. But uh, don't, <laughs> uh, let's not get too friendly till we know each other a little better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So nice. So far, I, I wish to do it uh, once again. I heard the chimpanzees. It sounds yeah, it sounds great. I'd like to do that. I mean, you you've seen a gorilla in the in the zoo. I mean, everybody's mm -hmm. seen a gorilla, or everyone can see a gorilla in the zoo. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to Warsaw Zoo. They even have Warsaw Zoo, right? Yeah. They have gorillas. But the chimpanzees, the gorillas seem fairly relaxed. Mm. But the chimpanzees seem pretty crazy. Yes, you know, if you search them in the forest, you have to be very fast because they move very fast. And yeah. if you if receive information, uh, information, gorillas are so close, you just need, you need to run through the forest because you can lose them. They'll go, they'll go quickly. Yes. Did, did you see chimpanzees in the wild? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It but you also... shouldn't approach them, right? Um, you know, they, they also call, come very close. They do, okay. They do. And you're not afraid of them? No, I no, even they... I, I experienced a situation like uh, chim, chimp was eating bamboo and then look at me and she said, okay, I'm relaxing. <laughs> and he that was like dying, uh, lie down like this. <laughs> you you were? Him! He was. Oh, he just relaxed. He said, oh, okay. Okay, take a picture if you want. Yeah, uh, so he wasn't bothered by you at all. No. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but they say that chimpanzees are very, are very dangerous because they, they will attack. They could, but uh, also each other, for a start. Uh, yes, yeah. because there are some families. But well, gorillas don't do that, but chimpanzees do. Uh, because the I, I, I think that's chimps, true. chimps yeah. are living in the yeah. families, and some they are very territorial, mm -hmm. and sometimes they need to find a fight for food. Unfortunately, uh, fortunately. Uh, unfortunately, well, forest is too small for that big uh, an amount of monkeys, and uh, they are fighting for food. People are cutting trees, mm -hmm. and uh, this is one reason why they are fighting. Hmm. Listen, uh, stay with us. We're going to come right back. We're going to show you some clips from YouTube, from some of us, uh, Eva's adventures uh, worth looking at. So. We'll take a break for that and come right back with more from Eva Hoyanowska Leszak, adventure tour guide, former model, and obviously all round beautiful and nice person. <laughs> we'll be right back. Dzień dobry. Co? I jak spakować się do Afryki? T-shirty. Unikamy w Afryce raczej krótkich ramionczek, takich bardzo, bardzo, no chyba, że jedziemy na safari, jesteśmy tylko w swoim towarzystwie i um, raczej nie obcujemy z lokalną kulturą. Trzy połowa i od nowa. A to resztę wy... Jak się do tego zabrać, to nie wiem jak to się nazywa. Słuchajcie, i trafiłam do Pili Pili House, domu prowadzonego, hotelu prowadzonego przez Polaków na Zanzibarze. We're back with Eva Hoyanowska Leszek, who is an adventure tour guide. And not only that, a very nice and a very beautiful lady. And uh, since we've only had men on the show up to this time, I'm really glad that we finally got a woman to come in and be a lot more interesting than all those guys were. Um, 
And talking about something that I really like, which is traveling, I guess everybody likes traveling now. If you ask young people what's number one on their list, they probably say traveling, and with good reason. I've been doing it for a little, a little while myself and living in, in different places, but Eva does it for a job, leading adventure tours. Yeah, it's, got, it's truth. <laughs> yeah, and I hope you like those clips that we just showed of, uh, of some of Eva's ad adventures. Um, Eva, I have a very important question, because mm -hmm. it's all about me. No, no, mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. It's not all about me, but it's uh, about uh, if you were to recommend a tour mm -hmm. for me, which one would you recommend? Um, you are very welcome to join to my trip to Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Okay, Ethiopia. when's that? I'd like to do it. Uh, at the end of the year, end of November, and I think it takes uh, 16 days. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, it will be adventure because we are going to visit um, tribes, and maybe Ethiopia is the most, um, in case of anthropology and tribes, the most uh, have the most uh, the biggest diversity of uh, this. And uh, we will are going to visit the hottest place, uh, one of the hottest places in the world, Danakil uh, Depression, and the uh, biggest depression in Africa as well. Mm -hmm. So it's also the uh, also a great adventure. Mm -hmm. So you're so welcome to join me. It's, uh, when when is it going to be again? End of November. End of next November. This so I, year. I can I have to get a piggy bank and start putting my uh, my money in it to save for the ticket. Definitely. Definitely, you will not. Uh, you will love this trip, especially if you like traveling, and you would like to visit places without m so many tourists. That is, that would be great uh, decision. Yeah, it sounds good. I mean, I, re I remember uh, one time. Uh, I've always wanted to go to Ethiopia. It's very romantic, and uh, so it has a. I mean, I know they had the famine there and stuff, but that's just a small part of their history. But the Haile Selassie of course. Uh, history and. And the book by Richard Kapuscinski, mm -hmm. whom I had the pleasure to know when I was starting as a, a writing okay. myself as a journalist. He was a good man, um, and uh, love his books. And he wrote a very good one about about Ethiopia, uh, the em emperor. emperor, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, then one time I was sitting on an airplane uh, coming from I don't know, I think it was coming back to Warsaw, but I can't remember where from. But it was somewhere, maybe Paris, let's, mm -hmm. for, let's say, for example. And uh, uh, next to me was a fellow uh, who we talked the whole time. He was coming. He said, I've just come from Africa. Mm -hmm. I've been in Ethiopia. And I said, oh, wow, tell me about that, because that sounds fascinating. Mm -hmm. And we talked for almost the whole uh, flight. It's about two hours from Paris to Warsaw. And uh, at the end, I said, By oh, Good Lord, I'd like to, we should stay in touch because this is a great conversation because he, he was an expert on Ethiopia. And then he gives me his card. He was the Polish ambassador Oh, I Oh, maybe I met him because I know uh, Polish representation. Is it He's, the same guy? He's a big guy. Uh, I mean, very tall. Very tall guy, yeah. big guy. Did he have glasses? I, can't I think so. It's been about 10 years. Yeah, yeah so maybe yeah. not this person. But in general, you know, I'm traveling yeah. around the Poland with some um, pictures and uh, speeches. Yeah. And I have one about... You're making speeches? Yes. Wow. And... Uh, Speeches one are of the, one Are of they fun? It's hard, isn't it? Uh, I like it. You like it. You're, I like it because my work is, uh, is permanent talking, talking, talking. So oh, right. Okay. So you're always talking, so you're, you're not shy as anymore. As you see. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, one of, his, of, of yeah. this um, speech, it, it calls Three Faces of Ethiopia. Because in general, if you think about Ethiopia, what do you yeah. think about Ethiopia? When first I think, spot. Well, I mean, I think the first thing I think about Ethiopia, I said before, is Haile Selassie. Mm -hmm. Um, I think about but nowadays. beautiful women. Yeah, right. Am I right? You is that what you're going to say that? Yeah. Yes, I'm lady. I'm, I'm saying oh, yeah. there are the most beautiful ladies there. Yeah, when we were filming uh, for my travel show, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, has not so far left Warsaw, but will soon. Um, when we were filming for that, I met, uh, we were filming at the Hard Rock Cafe, and there was a fellow there, uh, an American guy. And he, as I was walking by the table after we finished filming, he said, hey, 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 come over here. And I went over there. I said, hi, what's up? And he goes, uh, my name is this. And, and uh, uh, what you filming for? And mm -hmm. I said, oh, it's a travel show. And I got talking to him. And he had a, a lady with him. And she was very striking. And it turned out 
She was his Ethiopian wife. <laughs> yeah, very, very, and she was very, very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know, my my speech is about three phases about uh, of Ethiopia. So first speech is like first part is desert. Mm -hmm. Second part is our tribes. And the last one is the religious part because uh, you can't. So, not beautiful ladies? Um, I think can be another face. I will add another faces <laughs> later. <laughs> But in general, you really you can, if you go to Ethiopia yeah. uh, and you, if you travel to the different regions, you meet the different countries. Mm -hmm. In the one country, but different faces. And uh, if later if you ask somebody which part you like the most it depends yeah. because some people like history just go to the north and see churches rock churches which are sh which should be on the, um, they are on the UNESCO list there are yeah. some places in UNESCO list if you like culture if you like adventure and you like uh, people just go to the north to the south you can see in this very small area uh, over 30 different groups of people living totally different Uh, uh, totally different, they dress totally different, and they have totally different uh, rules uh, ruling their life. But if you want to be dirty, if you want to sound, and if you want to, uh, you, you, you I don't think. I about being dirty. Uh, but what, what, how you can be without water on a desert? Oh, Sweating so gonna, plus, plus sand. It's, so it's going to be like one of those movies where everybody's all sweaty. So you, there's a one country, and but different, uh, different, different. I've been places. in the jungle before. Yeah. Really? Yeah, sure. In Nicaragua, quite a lot. This is Central my America. also dream to visit there. Oh, it's beautiful. I lived there almost two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was a. It's a very, very interesting country, and now very high on the list mm -hmm. of uh, places that people want to go to. I mean, you know, I, I was looking at a list from Forbes, I think. Yesterday um, or two days ago, somebody told told me that in the middle of uh, Nicaragua, the jungle, they they have found very old city, even older, uh, very old city and well preserved, and uh, there are archaeologists archaeologists working there. In when when did they find it? Like one year ago, very. Yeah, but I didn't know about that, but I always thought that it might there might be something there. It's a very intense jungle there. And there is. They unexplored. have found the city, and it's very well preserved. And archaeologists archaeologists are working, and also tourists can enter there. Do they think it's Mayan or something? <sighs> Do they know? I yeah, don't know. Who knows? Yeah, but Nicaragua is amazing. I mean, you arrive in the airport, and. Uh, Uh, and, and you look, they have big windows mm -hmm. uh, in the main uh, lounge area and uh, you're walking through there to go and get your taxi mm -hmm. or get picked up or whatever and uh, you see a huge volcano, the Messiah volcano. Is, it's very close and it's active. Uh, so you know immediately you're in the, this sort of prehistoric primeval place. You have adrenaline the, and the adventure can start. Yeah, yeah, right from the beginning, and mm -hmm. you know where you are. You see it, and you know where you are. And I guess they put that, I don't know if that's there, so you mm -hmm. get this great window, because it just looks like a painting. Wow. And this massive volcano, and it's But, smoking. Did you try, climb yeah. this volcano or something? Yes. Yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. there's a park there, mm -hmm. a national park. Uh, it's protected with the rangers and all that sort of thing. And uh, you can go walk right up to the top. Yeah, you can walk around a lot of the rim. I don't think all of it. But you can walk around mm -hmm. a lot of the rim, look down into it. So if you go with me to Danakil, you will also climb the volcano and you can see the red color lava, red lava inside. Where is and this? You will Where is Danakil? Danak in Ethiopia. Oh, oh in Ethiopia. In on Ethiopia. Our trip. Okay, and yeah. you will sleep on the top of this volcano, hearing uh, hearing hell, because it's like a hell, smelling the hell. The bubbling and the Yes, you the will sulfur. hear like yeah. s the gas from the lava is yeah, coming yeah. out. Yeah. And you will smell, uh, because it everywhere you ha it's. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. There is a special smell, and yeah. you can see that this lava is, is working. It's it's real hell. Yeah, yeah, it's a real. It's a, like the center of the earth bubbling yeah. up to the top. Exactly. And uh, there's some kind of uh, it's a, a, an amaz a sense of the amazing, uh, uh, the uh, uh, beyond comprehension almost mm -hmm. force of nature mm -hmm. that uh, it could explode at any time. But but it's, it's amazing to me that mm -hmm. these volcanoes don't explode more often. Of course, in Nicaragua, they do from time to time. 
They had one in 1971. This is an interesting story. You want to hear mm -hmm. it? Can of I tell course. you a little story? Okay. In 1971, Howard Hughes mm -hmm. was living in a hotel in downtown Managua, the capital of Nicaragua, which is by a lake. Mm -hmm. And and it's there's a couple of volcanoes very nearby. And the Messiah volcano is the next. There's like a line of volcanoes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he... He was saying he had rented the whole top floor. Howard Hughes, the richest man in the world mm -hmm. at that time. Maybe J. Paul Getty, but they were the richest guys. So this is a hugely powerful guy. And he was staying in Nicaragua. He rented the whole top of the hotel, and there was a huge earthquake. And do you know, every building over a few stories, like three or four, five stories, fell down, except the building where Howard Hughes was. Uh. It scared him so much that he immediately left the country. He got rescued and immediately left the country, never went back. I think he went to the Bahamas. Now, right after that, it was, I think it was 1971, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, Rolling Stones did a big benefit concert mm -hmm. for Nicaragua because Mick Jagger's, I don't know if he was married to her or was his girlfriend <laughs> still just at the time, Bianca Jagger, was mm -hmm. from, she was a model, mm -hmm from Nicaragua that he had met, you know, this jet-setting model, you know, in the early days when the, all this stuff I was starting. I have experienced the earthquake once. Where were you? It was in Mexico. But it was not very strong, but in the more, in, at night I, I woke up and I felt... You actually felt it, right? It's, it's something going on. What's it like? Uh, like on a hammock. Hammock. It's like you're in a hammock and everything's yeah. just kind of moving. Do, do yes. you feel disorientated? Or no, no, no. I, I just woke up and I thought it's something, something, is, something is going on. Yeah. And it, it took like maximum 10 minutes and then I went to sleep. You just went back to sleep. <laughs> and yeah. in the morning I found out that was an earthquake. It was an earthquake. Yeah, I've lived in California. I've lived in Nicaragua mm -hmm. for you know, reasonable amounts of time. Never in an earthquake. So if people... If you don't want earthquakes where you are, I have to come and live there. There'll never be one, <laughs> apparently. Now, everybody else I know lived in California, Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. They felt an earthquake, not me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what that's all about. If you, um, uh, you said, oh, yeah, we, before you were saying that you're writing your blog mm -hmm. and uh, you hardly ever have time for that. Yes. Um, you know, the, the thing is, I'm so happy. Uh, I'm so happy because I travel a lot yeah. and I spend sometimes nearly 270 days out of Poland. But on the other hand, I have s huge pressure from, ins from inside to write about that. But it's, I don't have time <laughs> because if I come back, I need to prepare for another trip. Sometimes I'm only 15 or 10 hours between uh, one flight to another flight. It's even so difficult to yeah. repack my uh, luggage. And uh, like, like right now, I'm, I, I didn't travel three weeks, which is a lot for me. <laughs> and this is, the t this is time for me to... We're lucky to get you to come into the studio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to to uh, fulfill my my wish to uh, write a blog. Also, I would like to write a book, but the blogging is still my uh, passion so much. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's uh, it seems to me that a lot of people nowadays. Uh, I talk to these uh, the the people in this uh, uh, who understand the technical side of uh, of getting viewers, right? CEO. Right. And <laughs> they say to me... Engagement. Engagements, etc. Yeah, that uh, the best way to get to people is just to do a, a, a video instead of writing because people don't want to want to mm -hmm. write, e read even a short You are thing. right. What do you think about that? I mean, I, it's a shame that people uh, don't don't want to read if that's true. It's, uh, you are right. Uh, the truth is that uh, people are a bit lazy to l lose time for reading. Mm -hmm. uh, the word is digitalizing and you can see how big uh, is Instagram now where pictures are, are the main source of giving information. Very little people uh, are reading uh, descriptions below. Like myself, uh, I don't imagine making videos during my trips because client is a main point and to make a video you just need to go somewhere and take your own time 
which is not possible for me. If you want to be a professional uh, tour guide, it's not possible. So you have to be focused all the time on them, not exactly. yourself. Exactly. That's your job. Even yeah. when I'm on a trip like two, three weeks, if I take a picture of me, like four good pictures, I'm so happy. It's, it's uh, rare. Yeah. It's so rare because uh, it's difficult for me to ask my client, oh, please take a picture of me. Mm -hmm. They are the, mo the most important, not me. So oh. the only thing I can do, it's not maybe the only thing, but I try my best to uh, write a blog and you can uh, find very de uh, detailed information yeah. about not very common places. Mm -hmm. That's why maybe I'm very recognized in Poland uh, regarding to uh, Africa, because not many people are traveling to Africa so often. And not, I mean, you say 50 times, that's a lot. Yes, I of, think so. Of times, I mean, I think, uh, I don't think I've traveled anywhere 50 times. <laughs> so the United States and Europe, yeah. Mm. Uh, but not even one place. That's, that's uh, not one continent. Well, maybe to the States, I suppose. <laughs> Must have been true. By now. Once I wanted to count all my flights during one year, but I stopped because there, there were so of, many. You have a huge amount of miles. Do you have a lot of free flights? No way. No, <laughs> no, no. You have a huge amount of miles, though, right? Uh, but from my experience, I know it doesn't. It's hard to use um, them. It's of course it's worth in some cases, but it's not a big deal to have a miles no, because, because any, what does it get you? anyway you need yeah. to pay taxes and it's like yeah. thirty or max or four, fifty percent of the t uh, t uh, ticket cost. Is that it? Yeah. yeah so I change points into cosmetics. There, <laughs> into cosmetics. So you just go through the. You shop in the yeah. in the magazine and, and use your points that way. Yes, because yeah, I mean, the difference yeah. between uh, price in internet, if I want to buy, and price uh, which from the airline from the airline and p c uh, using a points, it's just a little bit. Yeah, and you might as well just do it. And uh, or you get a better break on the internet, probably. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, last time I had a bunch of miles, I just it came time I I couldn't use them mm -hmm. because trying to use them was taking more time than yeah. trying to figure out how to use those miles. It made no sense. And the people yeah. really don't want to help you, from my experience. I agree, yeah. So, so, so difficult to get an, in, any information. I, yeah, yeah, they're just like, what? Miles? Uh, talk to this person. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I, I suppose if you and I both have, have that experience, maybe you have that experience too, write, it, write in below the... Yes, please, I will read. We will read it right in below the uh, uh, below the story, yeah. <laughs> uh, below this story, um, or this interview, whatever it is. It's an interview. It's a story. It's a series of stories, isn't it? I'm I'm wondering also. Um, you one of your things you were doing was you were uh, rafting in Uganda. Now I was just watching a uh, movie <laughs> called Shout at the Devil. It's mm -hmm. an old movie. And it has Lee Marvin and Roger Moore, the mm -hmm. James Bond figure. And, of course, Lee Marvin, one mm -hmm. of my all-time favorites, but um, hilarious actor, but also very, very good as a tough guy as well. Yeah, yeah, he's a wonderful guy. But uh, the, this movie takes place in, in uh, uh, Uganda, I believe. On the, the, where's the big lake? Lake Victoria, is it? Yeah. And... How, does the ocean come in, uh, or river comes into Lake Victoria? Uh, there is a river Nile. And and there it, is a. I it, mean, there are some. There are some uh, places where Nile can start, and there is a no specific place yeah. then to say for sure. But but one is in Jinja in Uganda. It's in the middle of the. Not maybe in the middle, but in Victoria Lake, and uh, there's a, maybe there are few sources of Nile. And I think so because you can also come from the ocean in there somehow. Uh, no, you go up the river. No, there or is a it's cut as off? far as I know. It's cut off. Uh, there is uh, one in uh, Ethiopia, mm -hmm. in uh, Tana Lake, mm -hmm. and another one is in Victor Victoria Lake, and it it connects in uh, Omdurman, I mean in Sudan, in uh, Khartoum, and then it goes to the one spring, one 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 line, mm -hmm. but. Also, I, a few weeks ago, I found I found information that also in Rwanda we can see another source of Nile. Uh, source of Nile. Mm -hmm. So there's a yeah. So the Nile is is gathering a lot of steam up. Uh, and still, uh, we don't know which you know. which river is longer, Ama uh, Amazon uh, River or Nile River. 
because it's hard to trace the actual source to exactly. its last point exactly. because of the dense uh, jungle, uh, right? Is that yes. It? Yeah. Um, but so rafting, you have to, if you go to Uganda, one of the attractions is also rafting yeah. uh, on the White Nile, and yeah. it's a great experience because uh, I took a full day tour, and it's six um, rapids, and uh, out of six rapids, four are uh, level of five, and uh, two are level of four, which five, as far as I know, is the highest, is the more difficult one. So this, where does the, which river, this is the White Nile? White Nile. The White Nile, and this is going, uh, where does it flow from, this particular part that you're on? Um, where is it exactly? In Jinja, in uh, Uganda. Yeah, okay. In, uh, it's city Jinja, if you want to take a boat to see the source of Nile, which is the stick uh, in the middle of the, of, the, of the lake, so you can uh, say that in Jinja it's the source of Nile, um, in, mm -hmm. uh, inside Victoria Lake. Mm -hmm. And is it very dangerous doing this rafting? Um, Have you ever had any accidents? Or? Uh, I, when I was the first time, I broke my nose. <laughs> you broke your nose? <laughs> and, uh, and, for example, the, the no staff with us were without teeth because the pa uh, paddle is easy to lose and it hits your teeth. It's so The common. paddle? Yeah. The, you're using a paddle and this can go in your you mouth? You know, if you go to the rapids, you, yeah. the, 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 the boat is... Uh, the water can do everything with this boat, and it, sometimes it goes like this. Yeah. And if you fall down from the boat, you can lose the paddle, and it goes somewhere. You don't know where, <laughs> and uh, your neighbor can lose your teeth. Good lord. Or if you, or if you don't behave well, don't um, go with the instructions, you can do by yourself. Because, if, for example, you need to put the pedal here. Mm -hmm. If you fall down, you just go fall down. But if you put it here, it's so easy to break your teeth. Wow. So you you got to wear, it's like American football. You need a mouthpiece or something <laughs> yeah, to, to go rafting on the... That sounds incredibly... You're very brave. I like that. That That is amazing. Uh, you were also in the uh, uh, practicing in, was it Nepal? For the Himalayan uh, no, no, base camp? <laughs> Where was that? Himalaya base camp. Uh, it's a special event in Poland. Oh, it's in Poland. Okay. Yes, it's a right. special event in Poland when you can try to experience, when you try experience how uh, climbers can uh, live when they are climbing. Mm -hmm. For example, um, you find out how to use lines I don't know the special English words to describe, but... You mean uh, uh, climbing lines? Climbing yeah. lines, yeah. and you... I spend one night... Ropes. Yeah. Yes, I have, I have spent one night on a wall, on a special tent, which was hanged on the wall 25 meters up. It's a great experience as well. Gee, I don't think I'd like to do that. This kind yeah. of uh, event also can learn you, uh, learn you how to behave in the mountains, how to use devices, how to uh, first, first aid rules and how to behave in the mountains in winter right. when you can have uh, huge snow, mm -hmm. uh, also avalanche uh, courses. Everything is connected about security in the mountain. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's winter edition or summer edition. I think it's good for people who want to start their um, uh, adventure in the mountains. It doesn't matter if they want to just walk or they want to uh, take some more. Mm -hmm. For example, I don't know, to climb um, Matterhorn, which mm -hmm. you need ropes and uh, special devices and uh, some attitudes to do that. Absolutely. For example, last year I, yeah. I was on, the, it calls winter camp, when I uh -huh. started loving uh, mountains, uh, but so hard. And um, it was a kind of spark to do much more. I wish to climb Kilimanjaro this year. I do Are you going to? Is, is it climbing or walking? Um, Kilimanjaro? It depends of route you take. The most popular are Machame, which is only walk, mm -hmm. but there are some you need uh, special equipment. Yeah, I, I would love to go to the top of Kilimanjaro. It's such a, it must be an amazing view. I'm it's, working it's so on that to do. so high above the plane and you can see everything. 
What's what's the height of Kilimanjaro? It's uh... Uh, 508. It depends of the list. Uh, 500, uh, 5, 5865. Yeah, so that's a very tall mountain to be mm. able to walk to the top. It's probably the only one in the world where you can walk so high. Yes, uh, this is without climbing. Uh, yes, yeah. this is the one of the. the this is one of the highest uh, we can, you can, we, we, without any special equipment. You just need to, to have good clothes, good shoes, and physical prepar do some, some physical, physical pre fitness. Yeah. Fitness. I mean, be able to walk. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 because and the, the, the most the, important, yeah. the, the most, the most difficult thing is the attitude and That's limit. That's you say the altitude is the very. The limit of yeah. oxygen. Yeah, because you got to be able to mm. breathe. Uh, when you're when you're walking because you're still walking up yeah and that probably takes uh, my route some takes adjustment, seven yeah? seven days and there are three days of acclimatization we are we are seven days yeah yeah wow and um, I I'm preparing for the route where three days we are nearly at the same uh, attitude which is like 4,300, right. but still it's a lot. If you want to do some walk, it's so difficult. It's very difficult, but I hope I will make it. <laughs> no, it's not, you've never done it before. This is no. the first time. Have you ever done any high mountain climbing? Uh, the highest peak I did was 3,711, 3, 3, but the, it was in Uganda, no, Rwanda, mm -hmm. but the highest attitude I've been was 5,300 in Tibet. In Tibet, so you were in Tibet, but I was just in not Tibet. in the, this base camp practice. Was no, 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 no. So you've actually yeah. been pretty high up in Tibet. Yeah. yeah, it was so difficult. I was, I had difficulties to uh, leave a bus. It was, I felt dizzy, and uh, but it was interesting uh, feeling. Interesting wow. feeling. Well, I feel a bit dizzy uh, after <laughs> talking to you because it's uh, not only are you a beautiful lady and a very interesting lady. Uh, we're we were very glad to have you on the show, and uh, I hope you come back. I'm going to start saving money Hopes. for uh, Ethiopia. <laughs> yes, so welcome uh, for my trip. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. Thank you very much for Thank coming in. Thank you so in. much. It's been a great pleasure. Okay, that's Eva Hoynovska Leshak, who is an adventure tour guide. Um, you can uh, find uh, some uh, directions to her at the uh, credits of our program. And uh, if you want to go on a great tour, I recommend going with the wonderful Eva, okay? So it's been fun, it's been great uh, being with you again on There's a Will. Stay tuned, look at, our, uh, look at our previous shows and stay tuned for more fun and lots of action on There's a Will. See you next time and thanks for watching.